You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. All right, Thursday pod, punters and dribblers. Back at ya. We're back in your ears, in your eyes, in your hearts and in your souls. Um, as you may be aware, as you may not be aware, you will now become aware Merch drop this Sunday, 6 p.m. Christmas merch drop. Not just a merch drop, it's the Christmas merch drop. Now, if you like, I mean, if our DMs are anything to go by, then this should be the easiest Christmas of your life because you are going to have a Hello Sport Last Dribble t-shirt, as you can see if you're watching the YouTube, sitting right here with some nefarious rugby league characters nefarious not necessarily the right term but just some rugby league characters rugby league identities identities potentially arguably caricatures is it them is it not them who knows um you've got a be- which is be- which was a, a, a drawn a painting that was painted for us by the i think it was a watercolor a watercolor painting from the incomparable tate bailey the best in the business yeah Tate's the king of kings when well, it comes to the Well, he's the Picasso sort of, of the podcast. He's the Picasso of the podcast. We then pair that into the summer tan hat, mm-hmm. which has got the red Hello Sport embroidery. Very tasteful, very elegant. And then again, if you're watching, you can't see it there, but the little red chair on the back. So the chair on the front of the shirt that you can see is also on the back of the hat. These things will drop panties. They'll drop fucking pants pants and panties will be dropped this summer you can take that to the bank Mm. i would also say this tom i wouldn't be caught dead outside the house in summer if i wasn't draped in this little combo no you wouldn't wouldn't be seen wouldn't be seen dead because this is going to change your life now i don't think i've ever been this pumped about a hat shirt combo in my life i don't think so and that's from like, I could be draped in fucking Gucci mink and I still wouldn't be as pumped as I am. No, 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 no. This, little this, is, this is what it's about. It's very comfortable. Um, look, if you did get the bloke T-shirts, the bloke beers soon collab, they're the same type of T-shirt. So it's just whatever size you got there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's, a, it's like a true fit. Yeah. If you're a large, get a large. If, if you're, you're an extra large, large get, get an extra, extra large. large. If you're tiny, like Dave, get a small. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? I thought we aren't even having smalls. I thought we were just going medium and up. We got smalls. Oh, we got smalls. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, it's been a good week for the podcast, Eddie. It has. I think it's fair. You know, like we're not, you and I are pretty humble at the best of times. Don't like to toot our own horns. We're humble guys. Just like to slide under the radar. No song and dances, you know, no like, hey, look at us. Pomp and pageantry. Pomp and pageantry. It's not our style. It's not our style. But I think it is worth mentioning as much for, for... the Tom and Eddie of six years ago, sitting on a couch with a little microphone and just some fucking big dreams. Some huge dreams, some pipe dreams. Some pipe dreams. I think for them, for those two young gentlemen, I think it's worth just acknowledging that this week, for the first time ever, we were the number one sports podcast in the country. Number one. Number one. Top of the heap. We're obviously now officially top of the heap. We've always been top of the heap, but being a top of the heap is also a mindset. Um, it's an attitude. It's an attitude. It's a way that you approach things. But this week, legitimately, we were uh, number one. And you look at that top 10 list, it's fucking former athletes, fucking governing body, sports body sanctioned fucking podcasts, or it's, you know, media company podcasts, like big media companies or radio stations or all that. And then there's just little old fucking... Little old Hello Sport. Hello Sport. The potty that could. The punters and dribblers sitting atop Mount Podcast. Well, I think that's what we need to acknowledge as well. It's the punter and the dribbler sitting up top. Because yep. without the support of the punter and the dribbler, whom we owe our lives to, yes. wouldn't be possible. No, it wouldn't. So and it's and a, for it, a large portion, they've sort of been there from like that fucking dead shits on the couch to now mm. atop the heat. That's it. We, we owe it all to punting and to dribbling. And to see punting and dribbling recognised, mm. dribble and yarn recognised, yeah. it, it warms my heart. Yeah. Because not even I thought that dribble and yarn could, could take us to these heights. Could take us to these heights. You know what I mean? Like, I think you're, you always do, but you just never, never want to like, count your chickens 
Count no. your dribbles before they hatch. So you don't want to count your dribbles. That's that's an old lesson for young players. Never mm. count your dribbles because before they've before they've hatched. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to get found well, out. What if they you don't, don't hatch? get found out? What if they don't hatch? What if they don't hatch? Holy shit! My eggs didn't hatch, and now all I've got is an omelet. Yeah. and it might be a delicious omelet. It might be a delicious meal of scrambled eggs. But, but you don't have any chicken. That's not what you were asking for, though, was it? You wanted chickens, bro. Mm. Now you've got an omelet. So anyway, look, thank you very much to the punter and the dribbler. It was very nice to see. Now, obviously, these fucking rankings change like every other day. So I don't even I don't think we're even up there anymore. But we were. We were number one in the country we for a two few days. days. So come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Number one. Come on. Anyway. Leighton gets it. We get it. Leighton gets it. We get it. The punter and the dribbler gets it. But we're back Thursday, ripping and tearing. Obviously, the merch drop, Sunday, 6 p.m. Set your watch to it. Go check it out. You can get the hat by itself. You can get the shirt by itself. You can get a combo, and you will get yeah. a discount. There will be dribbler packs available at a discounted rate. Correct. Yep. They're for the true dribblers. For the true dribblers. Well, I'd be shocked, though, if you're going to get the hat and not the shirt, or the shirt and not the hat. I would just... Expect that basically it's going to That wouldn't make any sense. No, it wouldn't. That'd be the stupidest thing you could do. Yeah. But, you know, you got to get in there early for Christmas as well. If you want it by Christmas, you're going to have to get in early. Anyway, that's merch chat. That's merch chat. Did you see last night, Eddie, that Todd Carney was hocking crypto on his Instagram? No, I missed it. Let me get it up for you. I was out ripping and tearing down Wolf Bar. Yeah, you were. And we'll get into that. In fact... Give us that info first. I think there's a bit more in that, and I'll, I'll find this Todd Carney thing. We can come back to Todd. So, friend of the show, Carly Austin, yep. who's a dear friend of you and I. And Talia Cox, in fact. And Talia Cox was there too. That's right. She was doing the PR for the new Wharf Bar launch. So, nip down there for a couple. Free piss, bit of a who's who. Bloody great job they've done with it. I'll start there. Fucking hell, if you want to get into your work in summer, draped in a sum Hello Sport summer tan, your last dribble. Nip down the wharfy because mm. it's, it's good. a good establishment wharfy. I'm it's a big a fucking, fucking wharfy good man. vibe down there, mate. It was a it was a good vibe, but plenty of dribblers out and about. Thanks for saying good day. Fucking couple of come ons here and there. You um, got to give them. Yeah, that's it. Daly Cherry Evans was down there, and that's what I wanted to get to. What a man! You broke skip. bread with the skip. With skip, yeah. I'm like skip. What up? How are you? Handshake. How? Handshake which, what's hugs? it? A handshake. Great. Just, but was it a, or was it a? Let me remember. Yeah. I think it a, was a. It was a bang. I think we brought it. Well, dude, so that's how close you are. I think we brought it. You we brought it as down. well oh, at one point. Fuck yeah, yeah dude. dude. Now. We, embra we embraced. Yeah. Me and Skip. Okay. I pulled Skip aside. We had a fucking yarn. I said, where's the club at? How are we doing? How are we looking? Is the, is the premiership coming in 2022 like I know it will? He's like, fucking oath it will, bro. Mm. We've got a great mix of young and old. Some wise heads, some young heads, youth, you know, experience, skill. skill. We've got throbbers here, we've got talent. throbbers there. We've also got the best player that's ever played the game. I was saying to him, I go, bro, what is it like playing with Tommy? Legit. He goes, I've played with Gifty, Snake, G.I. Chalk, G.I., Thurston, Smith, Cronk, Slater. Slater. All those motherfuckers. Yeah. All the motherfuckers. Jamie Lyon, who yeah. could forget. Foz, you name it. He goes, this motherfucker is on a different level altogether. He goes, I've, I've never seen anything like it. He can't explain it, he reckons. He goes, just it's, it's ridiculous what he did this year. It's, it's unbelievable. Beyond words, really. He's he was like, without words. He's without words. He couldn't explain it. He's like, he's the smartest footballer he's ever seen. Crazy. And then you tack onto that. Smartest, I just said, punters. The smartest he's ever played with. He's come from a half. Mm. Tack onto that, 6'4", 110 kilos, fast as fuck. Strong as fuck. He'd run a 10'5". Yeah. I reckon. Yeah, at a pinch. At a pinch. And then you roll all that together and you've got a Dalian footballer who's just starting to get into his work. Mm. On the 25, back, he's not even peaking, dude. Not even peaking. Tack onto the back of that. Uh, a side that's starting to find its identity, mm. I think we could say, Tom. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. It reminds me of the Britney Spears song, I'm not a girl, not yet a woman, 
All I need is time, a moment that is mine, mm-hmm. while I'm in between. Yeah. So like, you know, we're becoming men, but women in the context of that song, what do you reckon? In the context of that song, we're becoming women. Once girls, now women. Yeah. Uh, but in a footy sense, we're once boys, now men. Now men. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> I've never been more sure that we'll win the comp next year. Skip has put a fucking flame up me that's yeah. that I can't ignore. And no. nor will I. No, no, no. We've got aloe vera on you. Put the flame up you so hard. And there was just a good vibe down there last night. And I, I was looking around the room at, you know, people that love the peninsula, people that love the club. And I thought, yep. Next year's going to be huge. Good energy. Great energy. Great energy. Um, I can't wait to get down to some more games next year, some Brookie games. Just oh, fuck you, dude. Managed well, one this year. It'll be at Brookie now. Yeah. But just managed one this year because COVID fucked everything. Mm-hmm. The two. Idea, you and two. Did we do two? Penny. Oh, we did two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we forget the first. We were there. No, we were there. We were Thursday there. night, Panthers game. Night, Panthers game. Chairman's Lounge. Chairman's Lounge. Um, well, that's great. Again, you know, let the distance between us on the couch just be a metaphor for the distance in lifestyle. As I saw the, 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 the images start to roll in of you guys, dappled afternoon sunlight just pounding piss at Wharf Bar. It was the best afternoon sunlight you've ever seen. Like, such a nice sunset. Especially after all the rain. I know. I forgot what it felt like to have the sun on your face while you're Smashing working through piss. spicy marks. As I saw a photo, I've seen a photo of you guys out there. A couple of our pals are there as well. I was just being confronted with one of, and I've said it before, but I'm not like, it, Zoe's raising the bar for shits. This shit was humongous and i guess babies at that age don't do solid poos they're all runny yeah this thing was like pumpkin soup colored great and it was all up her chest Lovely. all up her back all over her fucking you know front and back yeah basically just everywhere and i've just seen you on the fucking wharf at wharf bar cherry evans is there apparently and i am lovingly just, you know, just explaining the golf, wiping poo from my daughter's body. So she was basically shower. dipped in poo while Cherry and I, Skip, were in a warm embrace. Warm embrace. You were bathed in HD light? HD light. Bathed in it. Yeah. So, like, you know what? The colour of her poo, almost the same as the colour as, like, that golden afternoon sunlight. Seriously, I'm drenched in it with Skip while your daughter's drenched in it, and I'm guessing your hands are drenched in it. Poo-poo on the hands. You love There's that. There's synergy there. There is some it's synergy there. It's two worlds colliding. Yes. We're whilst, whilst not... Whilst not whilst anywhere, anywhere near, near each, each other. other. It's like a nod from across the abyss. Yeah. Tough titties. Stiff shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, not stiff. Very watery. Um, anyway. Is what it is. But th- I'm, I'm hearing, Eddie, from you, yep. from people in the know, yep. that there is... We've got a good shot at Jag and Skip on the pot at some point. Obviously, the 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 what what am I the environment around players doing podcasts at the moment? Um, I don't know how players feel. It'll be interesting to see off the back of you know Dean Ritchie's swear word counts. But well, I'm I mean, I, I'm here and we're we're close to look. I think I think we're pretty close. Skip seemed pretty pretty into the idea. Probably going to do it at Wharfie over a couple of margaritas. It won't be a live show. That's no. just where we'll do it. We'll just film it and record it there. And we'll film it and record it there. And it'll be a nice, comfortable, inv- inviting setting for the three of us, I think, where we can feel at peace. Yeah. We'll be on the peninsula, which I think feels well, right. Well, that, that feels right. We'll be outdoors on these nice, beautiful couches that they've just purchased, which are divine. Mm. The margies will be flowing, as I said, and we'll be ripping and tearing for the the punter and the dribble, obviously, oh, absolutely. but more specifically for those of you that love the club. Yes. And love what Manly's all about. Who just live and breathe 13 plus. That's exactly right. He actually said that. He's like, that's all we talk about now, <laughs> winning 13 plus. And when we don't win 13 plus, like, fuck, we didn't win 13 plus. <laughs> I'm like, you better believe it, bro. Yeah, well, mate, that's how we feel. But let's be honest, like, the majority of the time, if we win, we win 13 plus. 
Well, unless we lost, we won 13 plus. Yep. Put it that way. Mm. We didn't win any tight ones this year. No. Because we're too good. Yeah. We're too good for it to go tight. Yep. So that's good. That's warming. That's inviting. We'll see what happens. There's no time pressures, nor should there be. No. You'll know about it when no, yeah, we put the cunt out. Yeah, we'll drop it on you. See, cunts per hour. Uh, you got some fluff on the top of your head, just above your left eye, back a bit. There we go, got it. It's been annoying me for the whole time. That's all right, doing fluff it. can be annoying. But I was like, I'm sure that no one can see it, but I can see you it. You can see it because I'm looking it, at it. Is you. it worth me mentioning because I can see it? It's, it's well, now that you've mentioned it, do you feel like... I feel like... Do you it, feel better? Not really, you know? Like, it doesn't actually... It clearly wasn't affecting me that much. It's probably something deep-seated inside me that's actually, like, causing angst. Yes. Not that. Okay. The fluff was unfairly tarnished. Yep, sure. And it's just more internal term, turmoil that I'm sort of dealing with, grappling, you know? Yep. Well, you know, you just fucking compress that deep inside. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. What's Todd done? Todd. Now, Todd Lee Carney of former NRL star fame and NRL Scallywag fame. fame. Of Dally M winner? Yep. Dally M winner. A gifted gifted footballer. A gifted rugby league footballer. um, But, you know, sometimes found his way around a scandal. Todd, last night on his Instagram was posting um, what could only be deemed as financial advice. <laughs> uh, not that one, David, but that certainly is one of them. I'll just read it. But also Instagram took it down because we put it up and then Instagram took it down from us because they were like, it's spam. Because um, we had heaps of dribblers going. Cause basically, I just screenshotted Toddy's thing and shared it. And I'm like, is this legit? And everyone was like, no, nah, bro, he's been hacked. So Todd's been hacked. Right. Um, or has he? Or has he? So let me read this to you. I never believed in Bitcoin until I got in contact with an expert trader who showed me how it works. I'm really surprised that I made over $10,800 within an hour. Bitcoin mining is real and has really worked for me. DM me if you're interested to know more about how it'll work. Or follow my coach to start earning now. So I saw that. Was that it? That was it. Look, I was like, wow. I, I was not completely ruling out the possibility that Todd now giving out crypto advice on Instagram. Well, you know what? He has the ability to blame it on being hacked if it doesn't go well. So he goes to market with this new idea, almost a little bit potentially pyramid schemey. Like you push guys to me and then you invite guys to push guys to you and up and up and it up goes. And up and up and up. And he's rolled the dice. Maybe he didn't get the feedback he was potentially looking for. Gets flagged by Instagram and goes, fuck it, I got hacked. You've always got that to rely on. Remember that, punters and dribblers, when when life, you know, throws curveballs at you, yep. you got a couple options. Or if you've fucked up. I've been hacked. Had to shoot an intern. It's one or the other. If you wake up and you go, holy shit, did I send those texts last night to that chick? Because they're like, now I'm, drunk filled and, with ang- yeah. now I'm filled with anxiety. Maybe shortball her some crypto advice. Okay. Follow it up with crypto advice. Pad the ruse. Yeah. Pad the ruse. Pad the ruse. Other fucking sort of like, you know, you've got an ATO scam sort of vibe. Start calling her and saying, this is a government yeah, call. This is a government call. Yeah. That sort of shit, right? Act like a bot. Start acting like a bot. Be the bot. And then after a day, go, holy fuck, like, I've been locked out of my phone. Like, I yeah, lost yeah. it, whatever. Holy shit. Like, look at all this rogue I'm shit. I'm so that sorry that I was sending you all this stuff. And then, then she'll probably reply and be like, oh, God, I, I thought something was up. I was like, what's going on here? Is this guy a freak or is it a bot? Yeah. And then you go, now, you, now you're talking to her. Yeah. And you go, no, no, no. Look, I've been fucking hacked. It was crazy. Anyway, yeah. what are you doing later? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad those messages you sent me weren't you because we are cousins <laughs> we are related so <laughs> that would have been a problem and you go yeah no 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 of course no no absolutely absolutely see you at christmas see you at christmas see you at christmas don't worry about it hope your dad's well yeah, hope, uncle. no, hope uncle's well yeah <laughs> say good day to uncle bob and auntie sue um <clears throat> And then you're off scot-free after sending photos of your genitalia to your cousin to your cousin do you know what i mean pad the ruse now, is that what Todd's doing? I think there's a fucking good chance there is. 
Todd's out of the game now. He's looking to make money, looking to diversify his revenue streams, Tom. Well, you've got to, Eddie. We've been speaking about this all we have morning. Been. We have been. It's all about diversifying your revenue streams, punters and jibblers. You want to have five or six on the go. If you can. If you can have 10 to 12, perfect. You think about you know Toddy? What I mean? What's Toddy got? <laughs> Toddy's, I think Toddy does some coaching. Is he still playing for Byron, coaching up there? I think he might be a captain coach of a club. Dave will be able to find that out for us. That's one stream. He's probably pulling a couple of beers. There's two. I think he's selling some beers. Three. If you look at his Instagram, he's pushing the biz. There's three. Crypto, four. four. He's probably doing a little bit of influencing, five. Yeah, and I mean, listen, do you if you if you don't think that Toddy Carney's got a corpy or two in him. Bang. He'd be in high demand in the right circles, Tom. Yes, he would. Particularly at a Larrikin luncheon. Yes. A Larrikin luncheon with Todd Carney. Guest of honour. Yeah. Todd Carney. At the Larrikin Luncheon. There's six streams, punters and jibbers. You get what we're saying. You get where we're coming from. I support Todd in his quest to hoodwink the punter and the dribbler into, Same. you know, financial little crypto schemes. Well, he's just talking about, he's made, Todd made $10,000 in an hour already. I think Todd would be, it'd be criminal for him not to be sharing that sort of shit with us. Mate, you know? Todd's a great bloke. He goes, I've just made 10 grand in one hour, 60 minutes. Yeah. I have to share this with the punter and the dribbler. They need to know. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Tom. You got to pay it forward. People don't get that. No. But it's important in life to pay it forward because when you do pay it forward, good things happen to you. Society so much is about take, 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 take. Give, me, give, me, give, me, give, me, give. me. And also, Todd, who's had a bit of a scallywag past, obviously reformed, obviously done the hard yards to work on himself, gone internal, gone out external. Yeah done the right things he's now on the straight and narrow it's time to f for todd to give back todd's had a kid todd's a dad now todd's a dad new outlook in life new reflection yeah new looking through the 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 lenses of a different colored glasses yeah they are they're different colored well they're p parentally colored tinged yeah. with you know the responsibility that comes with you know wiping poo off wiping poo backs off backs and fronts yeah getting shit on by a, another human and just having to cop it that's a that's a that certainly adds a different Cold lens. When you get pooed on right? twice a day, it, it, your outlook changes. It does. It, it's impossible for it not to change. Because, I mean, realistically, think about it, this, punters and dribblers. How often have you been pooed on if you don't have a child? Realistically. Unless you're into it. Unless, unless you're like a poo guy. Unless you're a poo girl. guy who like, likes getting shit on. Yeah. And they're out there. Oh, so you exist and we know you exist and we see you. We see you. I see you. We see you. You are seen. And don't I worry. nod to you. Each to their own. Each to their own. But if you're not in that camp, if you're not in Camp Poo, <laughs> you've probably been shit on maybe once by a mate on a box. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, or a hands. <laughs> or hands. Maybe. Well, or uh, probably more likely probably a hands, more likely really. more hands. They get wild. You girls get fucking loose. But on the whole, I think you could count on one hand. How many times you've been pooed on? Yeah. I'd be, uh, yeah, comfortably, comfortably on one hand. I comfortably. Think, I think that would make up 95. Eight percent of people, yeah, count on one hand. Whereas you, as a parent, yeah, that's day one, dude. Been pooed on multiple times in my life. Do you know what else happened to me yesterday? So Evie got out of the shower, uh, so there was poo everywhere for Zoe. So Zoe had to be in the shower first. Then, so Steph's in the shower. I give her Zoe. We're washing poo off Zoe, cleaning Zoe. Zoe then comes to me. I go to get Zoe ready into her gym jams. While we do that, we then. Push Evie into the shower. Now mum and Evie are having a shower. Then Evie comes out. Mum takes over with Zoe because she's just better at it than me with like getting this tiny little fucking baby who like doesn't control her arms and shit and just Steph's like, let me do it. You sit with Evie. So I'm like, all right. So I'm sitting on the rocking chair with Evie. She just wrapped in her towel. She then whips the towel off and starts climbing me nude. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Evie. She's like up on my shoulders. And then... I'm like just holding her so she doesn't fall. She then slips and her fucking bare ass just <laughs> swipes my like nose basically through her ass crack like a credit card. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. I'm just sitting there like, that was fucked. <laughs> that was fucked, Evie. And she's so sweet and obviously she's just having a laugh. Like it wasn't, none of it was intentional, but I'm sitting there. But I'm she just, doesn't realise her old man's a germaphobe. Well, she, I mean, look, I don't think anyone's going to enjoy that. I'll, I'll <laughs> fucking, I'm happy to say no one's enjoying that. I don't think that's a, I don't think I can be ridiculed as a germaphobe. Well, it, for but me. it's an added, it's an added layer. <laughs> it's an added layer to it, certainly. It's certainly an added layer to it, but I was just like, okay, 
all right, we need to... Dad's got to put his foot down now. Dad needs to set some standards and some boundaries. <laughs> and having a bare fucking ass in his face is... That's boundary. There yeah. it is. We found it. Yep. We found you it. You put your foot down. I put my foot down. Have you put your foot down before? I mean, not like that. Like, I didn't get angry or anything, but I just but was like... the foot was down. The foot, I, found my, I found my limit and it's fucking ass in the face. So, <laughs> nope. We got to stop that there. Let's get you into your PJs. By that time, Zoe was finished and we could then move Evie to the change table and I could go and rinse off my face in my own time. <laughs> <laughs> quiet moment. Quiet, I could have a quiet moment yeah. just to exhale in a bathroom and look at myself. Yeah. As I sort of just, you know. Quite poor you, man. Well, yeah, just a bit of cold water on the face, a bit of soap. You know how it is. We're good to go. Now, Evie was clean, thank Christ. She'd just been out of a shower. Had it been another way, had it been pre-shower, I may not have been in here today, to be honest. It might have, that might have floored me. <laughs> well, thank God that wasn't the case. You've all got that to look forward to, punters and dribblers, if you don't have kids. And listen, they're the best. You have these moments, though, where, you know, your mate's at Wharf Bar and you're not. And you've got fucking... You're People are like, where's Tom? I go, two kids. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I have to say now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two kids. Two kids covered in poo. I'll say this on the margarita punters and dribblers. If you aren't aware, most establishments, if they're like by the book, at least this is my interpretation of by the book, a margarita will come in like one of those sort of like cocktail glasses. Margarita glass. A coupette. Margarita glass. A what? A coupette. Coupette. A coupette. Coupettes are fine, but fine for the right setting. I find personally that they'll especially on a beautiful warm evening, they'll go warm quickly, which mm. upsets me. Mm -hmm. They also slop out of the glass a lot. Well, they usually have slushy ice in those, or slushy, like, isn't it more like crunched ice in those bigger ones? Generally, there's no ice really in them. Or maybe, yeah, but not really. There's usually ice in the smaller ones. Get the Tommies. Get a Tommies margarita. They're in a short glass. A tumbler? A tumbler, full to the brim with ice. And they'll go all day in summer because there's so much ice in them. That's playing eyes up footy. Mm. Okay? They're, Tommy's Marg is the way to go. They're a bit sweeter than regular Marg as well because they use sugar syrup instead of orange liqueur. Or agave syrup, actually. Agave, there you go. Okay. So they are a little bit different. I just like the tumbler and I like the ice and that's all that's fucking... Are you also more of a spicy operator? Sometimes I go the spicy, not always, but sometimes, yeah. I will always kick off a margarita session with a spicy if it's there. I Might have one for lunch. Because you know what we you know what we do now, we drink at lunch. <laughs> Has, have I put that in your head now? Yeah, you have. And now you're thinking about it. Well, yeah, you? I am. <laughs> I am thinking about it. It's impossible there. not to think about. Look, it's either going to be a Bloody Mary or it's going to be a fucking margarita. I'm probably going to have a margarita. I'm just putting it out there. But also, the Bloody Marys down there are fucking good, and yeah, you can't are. go wrong. Coo, Coo Cafe, C O O H. Go down there, punters and dribblers. This isn't an ad for Coo Cafe. No, this is just, I need to nod professionalism, promptness, and respect when I'm giving it. As soon as you get in there, bang, menu's on the table, water's on the table, cutlery on the table. What can I get you? If you get a coffee, bang, two minutes max. Honestly, it's because there's the cafe version where it's like the takeaway coffees, and then there's the restaurant version. I am not joking when I say this. I think it is the most prompt and efficient establishment that I've ever been to. And it's not like you just go there once and you go, wow, the service was good. It's like, we go there all the time. Coffees take three seconds. The food takes four seconds. Seriously, food, bang, five minutes. Bloody Mary's three minutes. I'm not even joking. And this place is fucking packed Yeah, it's, for it's like, heaving. It's heaving. And we, and we always seem to get the seat we want though, of right course by the we window. Do. Of, well, I think they save it for us. Yeah, I right. went in there, we went in there the other day and we were short on time and I'm like, fuck me, dude. There's so many cunts in here. There's people everywhere. And we're up, we're up to our neck in like work. Business. Business shit. Lot on, lot on the plate. I'm like, dude, I don't know. Are we going to be able to fit this in? This is going to push it. We're today. hungry. It's, it's going to push the limits of what they're capable of. I sit down, Tom comes down because he been on the John. And he goes, have you ordered? As he says it, bang, my uh, fucking Bloody, Bloody Mary's. Mary's on the table. I'm like, oh, have I ordered? Two but, minutes later, food arrives. But again, that was a, I was five minutes behind you for, for, for poo base work. Mm. Like, and then we get down there, Bloody Mary's already on the table. And then That's we order the food and it was, we had like, we basically had 20 minutes we needed to get in, get fed and get out so that we could do record about even. I think that was it. And... We were in, out, fed, boozed, 20 minutes. Up here with five to spare. Yeah. 
Call it 15. I eat quickly. Tom eats quicker. So there's no issues there. We don't take our time. We don't fuck around. We're not there to fuck around. I'm a quick eater. Yeah. And I don't understand those that aren't. I don't get people that aren't eating. Like, I'm I get sort of enjoying like, okay, it, but like... Yeah, I get enjoying it. But also, this is about nourishing the body at yeah. the end of the day. I tell you what it is, and we have, we've got Bathus on the screen here. It's like pitting. I'm pitting, and I just yeah. need you to pump petrol into me, yeah. change my tyres, yeah. get me the fuck out of there. Mate, put it this way. If you... If the cars took their time to enjoy their fuel, they'd be there for fucking 20 minutes. I'll tell it's you like, what, bang, get this shit in. In what, 10 seconds? They could fill those things up in 10 seconds. Maybe even less. Like, I'm talking, obviously the F1 cars are like three seconds, but this is an endurance race, so they carry a fuckload more fuel. Yeah, right. Like, they get like, I don't know, hundreds of litres in there quick sticks. Well, because it's basically just fuel. Like, all the back of the car is just petrol tanks, right? Yeah. And True story. You know what? I said that based on nothing other than Well, assumption. and I agreed with you. Yeah. Based on nothing but assumption. On vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would assume alone. that if you got well, to carry Tom a lot and of I petrol, have covered Bathurst. We have. Tom and I have covered Bathurst, so we... Look, we've covered it. many things, but yeah, we've, been, we've covered, we've covered uh, you know, the, the great race a couple of times. Certainly once. <laughs> well, yeah, once. <laughs> Who's counting? Um, if you were to count it, it'd be one. If you were but to you count it, it'd be one. But if you you want could to speak comfortably into... say we've covered it many times. Yeah, we've covered it a few. Um, this year, no different. Well, actually, we've got... Uh, baggy green member Alex Ironside he's on the mountain for us this year he's been on the mountain for us many years not last year when we were doing it but he's back there again this year so hopefully he uh, delivers what's he going to give us the punter and the dribbler well it's, it's hard to know because we haven't given him any guidelines we're very much like a you do it you do something make it make it good I I don't know if he would be up to this but if he were to be up to it <laughs> Maybe just pull a couple of fanatics aside for a yarn. Get some fucking sounds of the mountain. Sounds of the mountain. What do the dribblers think up yeah. there? There's more dribblers on Mount Pan than probably anywhere else. Did we deal with many dribblers last year when we did it? I can't even fucking remember. Well, there wasn't many people there. No, that's true. It was COVID. The biggest dribbler we did deal with was the mayor of Bathurst. Yeah. And Former also, mayor? And also the guy that got kicked out. Remember that dribbler was down at the pub and he got kicked oh, out? Oh, bro. Because he, well, he got guts. caught smoking bongs in his car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He got, sm yeah. He's like, I got caught smoking. Security found him in his car pumping <laughs> billies. And he came to us and he started just yarning to us. We were like, oh, yeah. And he's like, he oh, mate, like, I was this just have happened back in the day. I'm like, yeah, I get that. But you know what, dude? You chose like the least fucking, the, like where there's probably a, heaps of security for COVID. No one there. Like it was really few, like few fucking dribblers. Of course, they're going to be a little bit more onto rogue bong smokers. he actually put us onto a documentary that i never watched surprise surprise of <laughs> <laughs> of the mountain filmed by this film crew these rogues that went up there in like 1999 i think and filmed what happens up there and a, that's this is back in the day when it was like cops didn't not go up there no people used to burn other people's cars at night and shit like I wouldn't mind watching a couple of minutes of that. Well, did, do you remember the name? No, I don't. If someone has watched it, though, send it to us because I wouldn't mind. Or if you're that Billy smoking Mount Pan dribbler, please get in touch because you can, you'd be able to remind Well, he us. told me, so he would know. You'll yeah, well, reach out again with the answer. Dave may be able to find it. I'm not going to hold my no, breath. No, that's beyond his capability. I'm not going to hold my breath for Dave. Like, if he did it, I'd be fucking impressed. But, but if we were to hold our breath, we may... No, you'd pass out. Pass out, out the, There'd be no you know, point in doing that. No, to Odi Gazoo, shout out. Shout out to Odi Gazoo, yeah. We've covered some... We've covered Gazoo. We've covered Gazoo race days. I've, dri I've, I've driven one. Yeah. Pump time, surprise, surprise. Dude, that fucking... Did we do that this year? Don't know. That last year? I don't know. When we had to do that... The, the car the driving, wet, the wet, the wet yeah, the was it the floodplain car driving? Whatever the fuck it's called. It's got, it's got a, Shh. it's got a name. Motor, motor, motor came, motor came, motor came, something pan, motor carna, motor carna, motor carna. Might have been that, and they yeah. just they flood the whole, they flood this flat sort of like cement area, and you fang it around in these fucking cars and try and like do handbrake turns around cones. But I, you, think, you think you're going way better than you are. So I hopped out and Tom was like, that was pathetic. And I'm like, okay, bro, you have a crack. And then I showed him back the footage. Dude, <laughs> it was, I like, I'm not a car guy. I can drive a car, I can drive a manual. Like, you know, I'm, but I'm not a great driver. I'm not, I don't hang my hat on anything like that. Yeah. But I do, I did 
at least think that I could I'd be okay in like a fucking handbrake turn. Well, you scenario. can well you can drive manual, so you thought you had what it takes. I have, and but it, you haven't driven much manual. Oh no, I've driven fuckloads of manual now. I've been driving manual. Oh, because Steph's got yeah, the manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, I was that was emasculating. Like that video, seeing it back as well, and just like knowing how it was in the car, and then knowing how it looked. And it was like, you've got a co-driver with you. And every time I'd fuck it up, he'd have to put the handbrake back down for me. And so I'd wrench the handbrake up to try and like get around this uh, cone and wouldn't like you would, if this is, again, you gotta be watching YouTube for this, but if this mic is the cone and you're coming in here, you're really hoping obviously to just whip the ass of it all the way around and then go again. I'd get to like, huh. <laughs> Like you wouldn't even get half around it. The, the car would stall and I'd just sort of stop. I wouldn't get any skid either. Like no skid on a skid friendly surface. I can't even skid the car. And you're getting watched by a bunch. It was you. And then there was like a bunch of like prize winners who got to like. Well, there's diehards. Yeah, diehards. People that fucking live and breathe Toyota Gazoos. And they would have done a million of those race day things. And that, yeah, exactly. This was like them like, you know, signing. Sign up here if you, for your chance to get to the fucking Toyota Gazoo race day. These guys were like, this is my time to go and fucking spin this car out on floodplains. And they were doing all right, some of them. Yeah, I was the worst there, I think. Yeah, you were the worst, comfortably. I think I was comfortably the you worst. You were the worst, you were the slowest. But you would have been the second worst on the, on the floodplain. I reckon plane. I was, no, I reckon I was. The I, lap, the I, reckon hot, I, was I reckon I was a midfielder. Then there was, did we, did we do a hot lap? Did we drive a hot lap or did they drive it and we were in the car? We, we did, no, we didn't, they, they drove the hot lap. But we did like some cornering. But we did drive yeah we did do some driving that hot lap was fucking terrifying yeah it was that was quick i'm glad we did that but that you was never realize how like i've always heard it that you've got to break later and harder than you think but when they, you actually when they're actually doing it you're like oh my god that's late and yeah. hard late and hard and it's apparently like car brakes on the roads we don't they they're made for like jamming the cunts yes way more than we do yes that was the first thing my old man taught me when we when I was getting my L's. Took me to like a area, I mean, fucking just like in Barrow where there was no road, like not high traffic. And he was just like, all right, not go as fast as you can, but he's like, I want you to get it, go quick. And then I just want you to fucking not slam the brake on, but just like press it in like, you know, like a consistent push. And he's like, we're just going to do that. And he's like, I just want you to know how brakes, like I just want you to get a feel for brakes, like how, how much you can jam and how much you can work and do. And I was like, that was probably the best fucking thing to learn early rather than like, hey, just try to try drive through town, and shit your pants in public. You brake form or like your your brake etiquette is important. Yep. Because when you hop in a car with someone who does jam the brakes like they're in a fucking race car, it is jarring as a passenger. Yes. I hope you realize that. And I know that like when I do it and there's someone in the car, I'm like, sorry about that. I've got I'm I'm conscious of it to the point where like even if I'm getting really close to the car, I try and I give it as much as I can before I do the final. Before push. I have to jam. Yes. Because you have to jam eventually. Sometimes you gotta jam. Yeah. Sometimes jamming essential to, you know, avoid a crash. But when it's just the like meandering stop start traffic shit, like you really don't wanna be you don't wanna be like quick off the mark either. You just wanna be like, all right. And you are good at that. I think I even said it to you the other day. You drive very, very like, calmly. And me, I'm a bit more like a... I'm not like a hard brake, a hard accelerator by trade, but I certainly don't like waiting. And I just, I'd prefer to like fucking zip around people, even though it's probably shaving like no time off my trip. Which shaves nothing. Nothing. Shaves nothing. Unless I'm in like a fucking rush... Then I start to employ the the cutting technique, Tom. I think you could refer to it as. But on the whole, I try and keep I try and keep zen. Mm. There was a time gone by when I was a young buck, 19, 20, 21, where I had a bit more of a hot head in me. I've tried to let those days go behind me. I've yep. tried to leave them in the rear vision mirror to use a driving Term. adage. Yeah. Uh, and now I try to be smooth. Yeah, you're a smooth driver, dude. I'll, I'll back you on that. I try to be a smooth criminal. Yeah. Um, I tell you what else has fucking saved my life just while we maybe wrap the car chat. Cruise control. <sighs> Never used it. Tell you why? Because I have a tendency to go, oh, fuck, I'm doing 140. Do you know what I mean? I can get away from it. Right, me. okay. I, yeah, I can see that. I just don't like the idea of cruise control... I like the idea of like, you just take your foot off the accelerator and the car starts to slow down straight away, like in a situation, whatever it is. Yes. It's like the cruise control thing. Plus, I've never looked into how I even work it. 
Okay, let's let's rephrase it. Are you anti cruise control because you've never used it, or you've used it and you don't vibe it? Never used it. Okay, but that makes the sense. idea. Go hard or go home. Bathurst nineteen ninety nine. Dave's found it. He's found it. Well done, Dave. Well done, Dave. In fairness, though, had we been holding our breath, we would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't find it just now. I was waiting to kind of... Well, uh, we can only go off what we see. Yeah, I'm not prepared to go off your word. Go hard or go home. Can you link that into our WhatsApp chat, Dave, so we don't forget it? How long does it go for? It's like 56 minutes. Sick. Sick. Punters and dribblers, watch Go Hard or Go Home, Bathurst 1999. Is it on YouTube? Yep. Sick. That's awesome. I have been told by a dribbler in the pub who that smokes got bongs. kicked out of Bathurst last year for smoking bongs in his car that this is good stuff. <laughs> so That's as good a recommendation <laughs> as you're going to get. <laughs> it's pretty good. That's as good a recommendation as you're ever bound to get for anything. So I think... He didn't need to tell us about that. He didn't. He didn't need to come up and chew our ear off, but he chose to, and yep. he chose to impart some, some wisdom. I really enjoyed that last year, sitting in the pub, because we got down there early. Yeah, well, we, we were like, let's get down there and just fucking... Well, it was eyes up. We go, oh, we've got to go down punt. for work. We didn't. We could have got down there at night. We're yeah. like, fuck that. Let's get down there for lunchtime. We can punt on dogs and work ourselves into a state before yeah. we have to work tomorrow, Yeah, which I think was brilliant. By it, was, it was smart. It was smart from us. And it showed wisdom beyond our years. It did. It showed wisdom. And had we not done that, we wouldn't have met Bong Smoking Dribbler, <laughs> and I wouldn't have been able to shortball the punter and the dribbler go hard to go home 1999 on you. YouTube. Yeah. So life's got a plan for all of us. It does. You know what? Fate is real. <laughs> had, our, had we not, we never would have met that guy. It's like we were that guy's life and our lives separately before we knew each other, born, the things that shaped us, the, the decisions our parents made. We then met each other. Mm. The, the decisions we made as friends, the growth. Yeah. We were in Bathurst. Sh- yeah. Reason we, we, like, we went, chose to go to Bathurst. Chose to go to know. Bathurst and we're back, start a podcast. Oh, yeah, you know, climb the heap, climb the heap, top of the heap. Oh, now they want us to go and do Bathurst back there. And this guy's whole life, whatever the fuck he's been up to, smoking bongs in cars and fucking doing burnouts and shit. (laughs) And then, bang, we meet. Are they called lifelines? Like, there's something where, like, your life and your place in time and space is called something. I have no idea. And I'm, that was when ours all- Converged. Converged, all three of us. All three of us. Converged. A triumphant? It was triumphant. Yeah, a triumph- it was. A triumphant triumphant. Which I think is also a word. Triumphant, like triumphant. Okay, now you check that. And how, how would you triumph? Triumphant. Okay, yeah. I thought you were a- uh, a good speller. Yeah, Dave, you're our fucking editor, bro. Well, it's because it's not re- It's a Latin word. I'm sorry I don't spell well in Latin. Well, I mean, if you're fucking, if you're producing this podcast, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> um, does it, what is it called? What's the definition of um, it? Uh, to celebrate a triumph, especially by means of a procession. To rejoice, to celebrate. No, is triumph. that triumph? That's triumphant. No, that's triumph. No, no, no. It says to celebrate a triumph. Triumph. Yeah, to celebrate a tri- triumph. Oh, okay. Yeah. Triumph. How do you spell it? T R I U M P H A R U N T. Yeah, right. Triumphant. Good word. It is a good word. Great word. Shout out to Bow Repairs. You reckon Bow owns it? You reckon it's, or do you reckon it's like a. No, it was started by Frank Bow Repair. Bow Repair is his last name? Yeah, yeah. I would have and thought that Bow repaired shit. That's what I thought it was. No, no, no. Like that was Bo his name. Repairs. And he was a bit of a figure in like early Australia. I've looked him up before. Why and have no, you no, looked no, him was, up before? Give us Bow Repair's yeah, story. So, well, and oh, and no, also I a, want to know why you've looked him up before. No, actually, okay. He was not a big figure in early Australia. Well, he might have been. He was a swimmer. He won three silver and bronze medals in the 1908 Summer Olympics to the 1924 Olympics. Jesus. Swimming for the nation? Yep. No golds, unfortunately, for Bo, but that's okay. Um, But yeah, and then it says he was also a decorated politician and businessman, serving for 10 years in the Victorian Legislative Council and as Lord Mayor of Melbourne, and building multi-million dollar tyre business empire, Bo Repairs and Olympic Tyres. Crazy. So that's a legacy fucking company. That's been around for a a minute. Mm. Um... I don't know why I know that. I just... I also like to see, and I don't know if I saw this before firstly, but Bitcoin, I think, was a sponsor on the wall there. That's a bloody sign, isn't it? For crypto, where we're headed. Bitcoin sponsoring V8s. How does that work? 
I mean, I could be wrong and not have seen it, but I imagine... I didn't think they were, like, centralised. To the point where Bitcoin sponsors something. Well, well, maybe know, it's like I don't a, even know who started it. Maybe it's like a Bitcoin trader platform. Yeah, I you think know that's what I mean? probably As what opposed to the actual I don't. Th- I don't think you've read the whole thing. Pizza Hut as well, a sponsor. I think that's true, Blue. No, oh, that's true to form. That's, that's you know, your fucking target market. No, your target market. market. I will say this. Good to see Pizza Hut still doing the damn thing. Fuck Domino's that, came in and took a big yeah, fucking... Yeah, Domino's came over and shit, shit all over us. Poor old Eagle Boys. That fuck, that was the death of them. I don't know if they're still with us. Well, Eagle Boys. Eagle Boys, were they even a franchise? They were franchise. Oh, really? Good luck, Eagle Boys. Why did you, why would you th- say they weren't? I'm thinking of Millennium Pizza, I think. Millennium Pizza in Vaucluse. Yeah. Nothing to do with Eagle no, Boys. No, but that was where I was thinking. Yeah, different name, different location, different pizza, different style, different thing. Yeah, that's how you get something confused. Not a different style. They cook pizza. No, they're a different style because there's like Domino's, Pizza Hut, Eagle Boys is like yeah, and all I'm saying is I wasn't. Pizza? I forgot that Eagle Boys was a franchise. I'm saying I thought Eagle Boys. Do you was even the know one what in, Eagle Boys is? Yes, they was on in Bathurst. Yeah, there was. Yeah, next to the petrol station and the Maccas across the road from the Maccas. It was right next door to the um the VCR like the video shop. Well, I never went in there, Eddie. It Didn't was you? Fuck, why the fuck would I be running a video? Because I we used to use Ed Hatter's account, but and videos. His password was Jess. Okay. DVDs. Oh, he's, oh, that was his girlfriend at the time. Yeah. I'm like, that's so lame. That's so But also, lame. I'm glad I overheard that because yeah. now I'm running videos under your name and not returning them. <laughs> and now it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Oh, God. Shout out to VCR stores and DVDs. Dude, and now nothing. No, they're nothing. Yeah, they're, we were still watching DVDs back then, weren't we? Dude, I used to watch Entourage on DVD. Yeah, and I used and to watch, watch Always Sunny. Always, Always Sunny, Entourage, How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother was a weird one that I used to get into because as a show, it's like... How I Met Your Mother's not very good. That's and you used it. to love it. Dude, I but used to love it as I used well. to piss myself sometimes in that show. Like, I used to fucking... But it was like... I think it was just it was easy watching. But it was something I always watched going like... Like, this thing doesn't even come close to an Always Sunny in Philadelphia, right? Like, in terms of it... It's like that very... <laughs> It's like a slightly better sort of like Big Bang Theory type show or like or uh, Two and a Half Men type show. Like yeah. that really fucking brightly lit just pop culture shit show. But for something... Is there a laugh track? Yes. Yeah. So it would be classed as a sitcom? sitcom? I think that's probably it, what it is. Well, it doesn't really class as a sitcom. What classes as a sitcom? A sitcom is a situational comedy. So it's basically any show that kind of centres around you know, one group of friends, one theme, one idea. So, like, How I Met Your Mother was, like, these guys in a bar. That is Ted, a sitcom. Ted's looking for love. Yeah, it is a sitcom, but it's not the laugh track that makes it a sitcom. Oh, sorry, gotcha. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So, like, you know... Science Could you track. have a sitcom without a laugh track? Yeah. Probably. Don't know how good it'd be. The laugh track's such a weird thing, eh? Where so it's weird, like, dude. Oh, this is meant to be funny. Like, it's weird. Yeah. Like the Brit- I don't think the in betweeners and those ones have laugh tracks. No, they don't. Yeah. In betweeners I mean, is fucking hilarious. Imagine if we had a laugh track underneath a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that'd be lame. It'd be very lame. But it'd be funny. Well, it'd be funny for like maybe a minute. Well, you just you just you just put it in randomly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should just put <laughs> Would it I in. just have to be here with a button like every time? We should just find some that's actually you could just do it that way rather than go and find a point. But you could just do it when something's not funny and then just like have a laugh track button. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a distinct memory of your room in Bathurst, fan facing out because you used to blow smoke into it. Yeah, because well, we used to, used to smoke in your rooms and you'd put a sock over your smoke alarm. Dirty undies everywhere, toilet paper everywhere. There was no toilet paper everywhere. <laughs> no sheets on the bed. About? What are we talking and about? Tom. No, I was just... <laughs> I was a little... Uh, less eager to just fucking i don't know run i was I mean, are you, you defending could, your room you could almost call me a recluse <laughs> i was a hermit you, were, you just, had a little you had a bit of recluse in you because you were like four years older than everyone <laughs> <laughs> well i wasn't and I, I resent that i reject that wholeheartedly um but i was in fact i was fucking the same age as street except i was first year so in the first year i was a year older than everyone but at that age, everyone's like, oh, dude, what are you, like, 20? And like, yeah, you're 19. What the fuck? What's the difference? <laughs> and then there was the people first year out of school, fucking 18. Yeah, 18. Having their first beer. 17. I had a 17-year-old dude in, my, in one of my uh, classes, and he was 17, if that makes sense. <coughs> it does. Now, 
as always, punters and dribblers, where are we? Where are we? Well, we were talking about Pizza Hut and how they they've done well to sort of not get shit on. Well, to sort of come back after being shit on. If you went to Domino's now, would you get the pan crust? Which are off the top of the dome was the thick one? No, I get thin and crispy. Yeah. But remember, remember all you could get was pan and then they were like, thin and crispy crust. Well, then yeah, they brought in a classic, which is in between. Oh, that's what I have, classic crust. Because you want a bit of dough to it, but you don't want it to be thin. But the pan was like eating a donut. Yeah, no, that's that's what Pizza Hut's And then remember do. they started putting like bacon and cheese cheesy in the crust. crust? Cheesy crust was cool. I could get around cheesy crust, but again, it's not what the pizza's about. Like, I'm here for the pizza, not for the cheese in the crust. Do you remember when they put the hot dog crust in? Yeah. Oh, oh my god! Fuck all that shit. You've uh, like what I wanted to know. What I want to know is what sort of sick fuckers did they get into the lab to come up with hot dog in the crust? The same people who did probably the um, KFC chicken burger, which was just two chicken pieces with bacon in the middle and like. That's it. That was a big seller. Never had one. Wish Pe- I did. People love them. So I'm, I'm hesitant to bag them because people that, a little bit like the Philado fish, people that had them loved them. Oh, dude, I, I'm not in knocking it because it looked like, oh, what, two fucking fried chicken patties with some bacon in the middle? Like, and cheese. And cheese, yeah. And I'm a guessing a sauce, some, some sort, sort of, of sauce, lubrication. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that sounds fucking delicious. I'm not knocking the flavour profile, Eddie. No, um, I, nor, and nor should you. No, but I am making a comment at least about the mindset of an individual to create that yes and i'm with you and i think that sort let's of a replace, person let's replace the buns with chicken yep. and instead of having chicken in between the buns we'll just have cheese and some bacon, sort of sauce and, sauce and, bacon. And, and i'm saying that the, the mindset of the person to do that is the same person who's like what if we put hot dog in the crust i'm going to say something and i'm probably i, I don't know how this is going to be received but i'm going to say it I don't think bacon on a burger does a whole heap. Like, I don't think that it's like, I'm not like, holy fuck, this bacon's ridiculous on here. Like, I don't think it stands out from the crowd as much as like an American cheddar does, for example. Do you not think that a burger is the sum of its parts though? (laughs) Yeah, uh, yeah, but I'm saying with or without uh, Bacon. bacon, I think they're relatively similar. I think, well, listen, firstly, I don't know that I've ever disagreed with you more and have never felt further from you uh, just as like a friend. But I guess it would also have to depend on the burger. But mm. if, if, if there's an option for bacon on it, <laughs> I tick that box. Like, Eddie, have you ever had a Blame Canada from Bar Luca? I haven't had that either. I don't know. I don't what, know what the fuck a Blame what the, Canada oh my is. God. <laughs> what? Have you guys never been to Bar Luca? No. no. Burgers. Oh my God. Where is that this, was, Dave? Well, like it used to be like the best burgers in Sydney before everyone else started doing burgers. There's one in the city just near Circular Quay. There's another one on Oxford Street where you get takeaway. They've got this burger, the Blame Canada, which is like, you know, your standard burger implements plus maple bacon. They put chips maple in Maple bacon? Yeah. It's like, it is the most insane burger. This is, where, this is where I don't, and I'm not saying this burger may be delicious, David. I start to get pissed off when people want me to make my bacon sweet. Like, Ooh, that's not what nah. I'm here for. I'm not here for sweet bacon. I'm here for bacon as bacon is You're here intended. for bacon's bacon? I'm here for bacon's bacon as bacon's mm. intended. I, I don't think that you can, like, what about a fucking fried chicken burger? Like, there's one from Pluma Road, the Askew Burger, which was invented by a guy who went to Scott's. Yeah, <laughs> and it's still and there. It, sta- it stood the test of time. It's like a fucking 20-year-old burger now. They have changed it a bit because they're, they're dogs. It used to be a double. I think I think the bacon on a chicken burger far more pronounced than on a beef burger. Yeah. Yes, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that wholeheartedly, and that's yeah. why I think context is everything. Context is everything. Context is everything. I don't think because if you... you've got a chicken burger with lettuce, bacon, cheese, tomato, all that shit. tomato, like it stands out a lot. More. It stands out, and it's noticeable if it's not there. Because chicken, beef is like a. Generally, a, a pretty flavoursome product. Yeah, Chicken yeah. can be a little blander. Yeah, on the whole. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a it's a little more. Um, Depending where you go, it's a little less punchy. Depending KFC on KFC chi- chicken's pretty punchy. Well, if it's fried chicken, it's punchy. It's punchy, like a zinger burger, pretty punchy. Yeah, a bit of fucking spice in there. Look, we're dancing around in circles. 
Shock horror. Shock horror. I don't even know where the fuck we are at all. Well, look, Other we, than to say... That bacon. you don't you don't rate bacon. No, I rate bacon. I'm I'm just merely making a point. I eat bacon all the fucking time. Bacon and me are pals. Okay. Well, I hope so, Eddie, because it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> Tom, to your point about sweet bacon, would you never have it with like waffle or pancakes? Or I something have like that? I have had it. I, I have, don't really fuck that way for breakfast. I've had it once in when I was in America because I was like, well, fuck it, I'll just give it a go. And I had fried chicken, waffles, and bacon, oh. and <laughs> it was delicious. That's what I wanted to talk about. Have you seen advertised on the side of buses this new like scrambled egg in a cup? Oh yeah, it's the God, most disgraceful thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Do you know you have to add you have to add your own egg? What? Can you look that up, Dave? I, I saw. I heard that the yeah, other day on the it's, radio. And it's uh, it's. Uh, I'm like that is the biggest wool pull maybe of all time. Scrambled eggs in a cup. Add your own egg. Oh, you might be right. That, that is <laughs> fucking outrageous. <laughs> that is outrageous. That's not a batteries not included situation. That's like going, oh no, yeah. No, no, it's like, that's like buying a packet of batteries and you've got to add your own battery. <laughs> yeah. Here's an Action Man doll, Action Man not included. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Action Man. Um, yeah, that's, there you go, Primo. Primo scrambles. Crack, see, look. Crack the egg, stir it, put it in the microwave. Okay, what is the, I will say this from just a health standpoint. I, I'm glad that the egg isn't included <laughs> because like the idea of having an egg sitting in some fucking primo thing, you know what I mean? That kind of makes me feel sick, but I don't, so what, there's just shit in there. Like there's probably what some like, pro, like some bacon and cheese. And it's you, like, you know what it'd be like? It'd be like getting a cup of noodles, but you gotta add the noodles. But all the fucking- All the flavoring, all the shit's, flavoring in shit's in there. Yeah. What are they selling them for? Um, Shop now. Cause like if I yeah go shop now up the top if I'm not uh, four dollars twenty five or one hundred and six dollars a kilogram four twenty five and you don't even get you got to bring your own egg byo egg that's almost something we should run an eye over yep primo scramble primo scrambles <laughs> uh, mark that down Dave don't let us forget we'll try a primo scramble I'm not happy about it but I'll try it <laughs> well I think we need to now nowhere on this website here. I do what the, are, what I are we the first people to visit this website? Who's are, visiting the Primo Scrambles well, website? I want to say this as well. A lot of people out there would be going, that is fucking revolting. Putting an egg into some sort of like cheesy... Cup. <laughs> cheesy bacon cup. Then putting into the microwave, which I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but the microwave now rather taboo. Especially for cooking meals. Sorry, this is just messaging for me. But... I see this product fucking everywhere. everywhere. It's on every billboard. Oh, this it's video on every looks train. disgusting it's as well. It's on every bus. I'm like, either you've gone so hard in the paint and you're going to bury yourself hanging your hat on primo scrambled eggs in a cup, or there is a lot of sickos out there that love this shit. Look, I... I just, I don't, surely it's not something that people are looking at as like a healthy option. Maybe it's just time poor individuals who I'm don't not, care what I they don't eat. Think, I don't think you could look at this and argue healthy, Tom. It's got cheese and bacon in it and it's put in the microwave. Yeah. So you're just whacking an egg into this cup of fucking weird sh shit and then. Letting the microwave, letting gamma rays do the rest. Yeah. Leaving the rest up to the old gamma rays. Again, who I, I, are we the first people to visit the Primo Scrambles website? I don't know who's doing that. What's web traffic like? That There doesn't look to be much in there either. It looks like a snack. I don't know if you'd have it for breakfast. It's 40 grams. That's how big the servings are when you buy them. That's worth $4. 40 grams, that's tiny. And I'm bringing my own egg. And it's BY own egg. Yeah. Not good enough. Well, that's also the thing as well. On the go, I've got to carry an egg around with me now. <laughs> Like, that's not... It should come with an egg holder. Something. Something, something that protects the egg. You know, yeah. the old school thing when you used to make at school and you drop the drop egg from the, the height and the, see if it... Yeah, like, the kid upstairs in my apartment was doing it and didn't clean up the broken egg. Yeah, you talked path. about that. Yeah. I think that sort of thing needs to be included, but obviously a little bit sturdier than the, the, the eight-year-old job. Than an eight-year-old. I'm talking like, you know, putting science and research and R&D behind this thing. Just so, I don't know, you clip it to your belt yeah. and you can carry around an egg. A little egg holder. <laughs> Like a, you can, and listen, it's versatile. Maybe you just feel, fucking feel like a kinder surprise, but you don't want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It is versatile. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Because you can't put a Kinder Surprise in your pocket. No, you can't. It Well, A, it'll melt. B, it'll, it'll break. break. And um, then, fucking, then you C, open it. a combination of both. <laughs> it'll melt and break. And I tell you what, there'd be no worse feeling than going to enjoy your Kinder Surprise, realising that it's lost its structural integrity. Structural integrity. Not only that, but the aluminium foil protecting it has ripped. And now you've got chocolate all, all through, through your, your pocket. pocket. I don't know if there'd be a situation worse than sticking your hand into a pocket full of chocolate. I've got a story and we might cut it out if it's too crude. Okay. But I'm going to tell it regardless and you can make a call. Note the time down, David. Yeah. We went to a festival once. At least this story was, story was, ref, was relayed to me. Mm. It could be bullshit, but it was refer, relayed to me firsthand second hand person to person to me yeah that someone went to a lady went to a festival um and had a kinder surprise egg she may have put some illicit substances into the egg into the little toy in or into the capsule the yeah the little toy that's inside the kinder surprise into the egg yeah yeah into the capsule yeah in order to smuggle and things and then put into the egg festival. back together yeah well the capsule back together and then in order to get into a festival. Okay. Right? Yep. Has got to the festival, gone to the toilet, removed said capsule, opened it, kind of surprise toy in it, taken the wrong capsule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Because obviously you buy two kind of surprises. Well, because you want to eat one. Yeah, and maybe you want a toy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want toy toys. That's true. You're eating the kind of surprises and then you want at least to get something out of it. Yeah. And she's t- taken the wrong capsule. And now she's probably worried about her fucking little brother or cousin at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's concerning. I used to have a friend growing up, right? And we went over to his house and his mother had collected like every kind of surprise toy. And she had. <laughs> yeah. And you were allowed to look at them, but not touch them. Oh, and this was on her directive? Yes. I'm glad you said you used to have a friend because I'm assuming he's in prison or the whole family is or at least we just don't talk about him anymore. It's that sort of a situation because that sounds cracked. Yeah, pretty weird. Pretty weird. Well, that's it's very weird. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Yowies as well. Well, Yowies did their best. I liked Yowies. You didn't like Yowies? I mean, they were a kinder surprise in like a Yowie form. Yeah. They were fine. It what was is like, a Yowie? I think it was like a Yeti, like a like a Bigfoot sort of a. But a, the Aussie version, is that right? Yeah, as far as I know, that's. Oh, okay. It's like a. What so what? Like it was a, our a, own a, mystic creature. Is that an uh, indi- is it an indigenous thing y- or is it? Or? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. It's a what do they call it? a cryptozoological thing? Uh, so it says Yowie is one of several names for an Australian folklore entity reputed to live in the outback. The creature has its roots in Aboriginal oral history. Okay. I like that a bit more now. Yeah. I thought this was just some Yanks trying to get on the back of the, no, kin- no, the hard no, work no, that no, the no, kind of no, surprise had no. done. No, no, it was a distinctly Australian. Okay. Well, now I've got a little bit more time for the Yowie. Time for the Yowie. Yeah. Is the Yowie still getting into its work? <laughs> <laughs> I think the Yowie's around. Well, a judge put a video up the other day with Yowie's. Did of course. You see it? For- no, I didn't. I, of course, that motherfucker has got Yowie's. It was actually funny. Yeah. See, that's the Yowie. That's the Yowie I remember. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple big Yowies, like statues around somewhere. Have we got any like real footage of Yowies? Like these like footages in the bush and shit? Yeah, like on a Nokia 3310? Yeah, I don't think so. No, there's one there. Where? <laughs> this one? I think it's all in images, dog. I'll search Yowie videos. Yeah. Yowie sightings, Dave. <laughs> yeah, Yowie sightings. Um, Yowie sightings Canberra. That should surprise no one. No, we actually had some Canberra people. We, we went hard in the paint on the... Uh, one story capital of the nation that is Canberra on the Bloke in a Bar podcast yesterday and had a couple of Canberra people reach out and none too pleased. <laughs> we can't help if, you know. And what was the sentiment? Well, I think it was a little bit like, fucking, you're from Dubbo, you're from Barrow, how are you having a Yeah, but, I'm, I but I don't pretend to have multi-story buildings. No, exactly. I don't, pretend to, I don't pretend to have seen anything other than a single story building until I was like 15. Mate, Canberra I, people try and pretend like there's some cosmopolitan city. I, mate, I, I was as shocked as anyone when I realised that people had two-storey houses. Yeah. I couldn't fucking wrap my head around it. It was actually a thrill for me to go up and down the stairs. Exactly. I used to throw up when I was in lifts from Vertigo. I'm not removing myself from that reality. That's almost why we're able to talk about it. That's exactly right. That why I, I, I can be purged of it. Mm. But make no mistake, 
you don't have stairs. No, and Canberra, neither does Dubbo. Canberra, so, one story town. Yeah, yeah. Play your role. Did you see that Jeremy Lin Eddy of the that fucking lightning in a bottle Lin Sanity of Lin Sanity, Lin fame. Sanity fame when he just started ripping for the Knicks that one time a few years ago? Well, not that one time. For well, that one period. One period. Not that one. Yeah, you know what I mean. Obviously, still went on to play some decent NBA as well. But he won a. Did he win with Toronto? I think he did. Don't know. That's I think a, that's he won a, a chip with that's, Toronto. Uh, did he? Yeah, that's I a deal. So. And a surprising one for me to remember. But I was. I think I remember it because I was like, oh, I'm glad he got one. But that could be wrong. He just recently signed with the Beijing Ducks. <laughs> sure. In the Chinese whatever basketball league. Yep. How does that make you feel? Sad. How old is Jeremy Ling, first and foremost? I think that's important for us all to know as a people. Yeah, I don't know whether it's that sad. I'm, I'm going to come at it from... He's 33. Okay, maybe sad's not the right word. How much money do you reckon he's getting paid from the Ducks? I reckon he'd be getting paid a fuckload. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is more from this angle, is that... How does, they, how does this make you feel? A bloke who had this lightning in a bottle moment who could do no wrong, who was fucking dominating, who was putting up 40 points a game, had this whole crazy movement around him. Mm. Is it sad that then it, his life sort of like... That that's the way he's going out. That it sort of f- flatlined, not flatlined, but like it was just... I that, mean... It was a brief sort of moment of crazy excellence and then it was sort of like... Well, he then just became like an NBA player. A slower demise. I think it was also, and again, this is going to be, cue the fucking NBA fans in the comments. We get it. You like American sports going, fucking that's not what happened. This is all off. This is vibe. vibe. That's I was, all the show is. We don't know what we're talking about. I was of the understanding that when he was at New York, when he had that throbbing sort of moment in time, he was almost the main man in the team through circumstance like it was almost like he was there he was like their go-to guy they didn't have someone who was like hectic to go to whereas then once you go to other teams it's like oh yeah sorry dude we've got fucking uh what's his name who won it for toronto and he also won it with the spurs and now he's the clippers huge hands <laughs> laughs really weird Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. thank you you know, you're not going to be the main man when Kawhi Leonard's getting around. That's just the way it is. But I, I tell you who's going to be the main man at the Ducks. Jeremy Lin's going to be the main man at the Ducks. He'll be getting paid a pretty penny as well. You'd think so, dude. I do, don't you reckon, know. do you reckon the, the Ducks go all right? I reckon that'd be the franchise side. It'd have to be, wouldn't they? The Beijing Ducks. If you're signing Jeremy Lin, yeah. I think the Ducks are pretty big. Can I ask something as well, Tom? You can. Now... I think we all are aware of the fable. I don't know if it's true or not, but I've always assumed that it was that Yao Ming's parents was sort of an arranged marriage situation. Yeah, there's a state, they, they bred Yao Ming. They bred Yao Ming. I'm surprised after the success of Yao Ming that they didn't keep that up. Maybe, maybe they try breeding a lot and it's just like Yao was the one that worked. Yeah, that were, yeah. Because so, it's, it's not a au fait accompli, just breeding two thoroughbreds that you're going to get a thoroughbred. Well, a thoroughbred of note. Yeah. Of Yao Ming's but, fucking... I mean, in Pony World, you know, Redoubt's choice and fucking, you know... In the Pony game, it happens, but how many times do the fucking... They sire group one winners, though, a they, lot. Of course they do, but I mean... I would say that there's a fuckload more pony fucking going on than there is maybe human breeding. And even then, you're still not well, seeing well it. Well, as just a like, sire, you can get a lot of loads off. Can. Will. Can and will. So could a human. But was that, do you think that was the approach Yao's old man took? The, the sort of the. Yeah, scattergun approach? Could have been. I mean, listen, China, I think, will do anything. But I'm, Yao Ming was at his peak quite a while ago now, 15 years ago. Yao hasn't been around for a minute. Yeah. Yao also, I think, like the unofficial king of China. I think like he's... Would he have his feet up now in China, just cruising? I think Yao... Or has Yao he moved would, to the States? Uh, fuck, dude. I don't know. Interesting. Why the... F- I mean, China seems like a scary place. Obviously, you see what you're told. I'm sure it is scary. Mm. 
but I wonder if you're someone like Yao, you just sort of life's good. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Sha- was it Shay Ping? Oh yeah, we found Shay Ping. Shay Ping was found, um, probably forced against her will to do that interview. The WTA now though are like, you know what? That probably is not good enough for mm. us because after that interview, we haven't heard from her again, and it's wigging us out. Yeah. So they've pulled all events from China. Good, dude. I'm so glad that they're like, that, that like these big sporting gov- bodies are like prepared to take a financial whack for like the greater good. You see like in the NBA where LeBron, you know, rightfully so, very fucking uh, like outspoken around sort of uh, African-American rights and issues and shit in America. But then when it came to, I think what was going on in, is it Hong Kong? Yes, I think. I think it was like the the, yeah, the, yeah. the CEO of the Rockets or some shit was like saying, I stand with, with Hong Kong or whatever. And then he got fucking told to shut up. LeBron's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like LeBron. LeBron knows where his bread's buttered. Yeah, he seems to pick and choose. And the NBA are like, we don't want to lose China as a market. I wonder how much they would, like, obviously it's massive in China. Like it's, it's massive. So it did fuck them completely? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say that unequivocally but it's a massive player for them huge and they see it as like it's massive now it can be fucking biblical right but for at what cost well i'm uh, dude i'm with you yeah but um, are you shocked no i'm not shocked and then you've got john cena fucking yeah (laughs) where he accidentally said what did he say what was a country he also he accidentally said taiwan is a taiwan was a country there's so many good videos of john cena like speaking and singing so this was when the new fast and the furious was coming out and he was just he wasn't saying it in any political thing either he was like just doing the press tour for fast and the furious and he was like i think he was in taiwan and he's like yeah i love the country of taiwan or something like that and then people in China got wind of it and were like, what the fuck? This is outrageous, did it all blown up. Then John Cena has to come out. Some For some fucked up reason, he can speak Chinese. And he comes out with this full like, I'm so, oh dude, he's a freak. Have you seen this one? No. This is like the best one for sure. Oh my God, get it up. Dude, John Cena is a f- cuckoo bird. Or at least he is so wrapped up in the uh sort of the machine that he can't get out of it he had to go and do a full fucking video apologizing to the people of china and saying like that taiwan's not a country and all he this said that yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. are you serious yeah yeah i can play that after but this one's good as well What the fuck? Chapter一样, Oh my god. So that Does was that sort of shit fly in China? Yeah, dude. I think like is it that must. a vibe to them? It must. Well, it's them that was saying, weird as fuck. It's them saying like the big movie star fucking talking to him. I but, get No, but it wasn't it was the way he was talking to them. It was what he was saying. Think about the way the rock speaks to people. Hey guys, it's Dwayne. <laughs> and I'm just completely full of shit. Like the way they the way like even celebrities talk to people in, the in, in their own, like in their own country or in their own sort of is like patronizing when you like the rock is right when he's like it's just it's important to be nice or it's nice to be important but it's more important to be nice and you're like yeah okay dude like that it seems to me like that same sort of over the top really americanized hollywood shit where he's the way he's talking to him punters and dribblers what you were just seeing we will try and put the video in there it's john cena sitting in the back of a car holding an ice cream in a suit he's wearing a suit not the ice cream and he's singing a song to the Chinese people about Fast and Furious 9 coming out in China and he's singing to them to go see it whilst holding an ice cream, which he then like very uncomfortably licks at the end of the video. It's not a great, it's not a nice lick. It's not a great lick. It's not a lick I need to see again. No, I don't need to see John Cena licking anything really. The other one that he did was like this really sincere, like I'm so, I can't, his face looks weird, dude. Like, has he got placky surge or is that just what happens when you're like, 
doing heaps of steroids and shit and you get older and it's just like your skin looks a bit... Well, I, I wouldn't be ruling out plucky surge. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be ruling it's it out. It's pretty common. Okay, here we go. We're going to watch the apology video. This is an old video as well, but, you know. No, it's 2021 so you handle it as far handle information uh what uh your eager to Jesus Christ. So ne he, he wasn't prepared to say it's not a country. Yeah, he just that would have been fucking weird. Yeah. But that's what he that's why he's apologized. No, I understand that. Yeah. Um there's also something... He Dave, did look weird in that. Dude, he looks weird. There's something about the, like... Because the Chinese market is so huge for... Uh, even, like, for just movies in general now, right? Like, they're, it's so big. There's something around with the Avengers and shit. They couldn't use... There's something around, like, actors they were using who were, like, Tibetan or... Or like there's a character who's initially like that in the in the Marvel world, they are from some country where if it was it like that doesn't jive with China, so they've just changed the fucking background of this character because they're like, no, we'll fucking it won't mm. that won't fly in China. They've yeah. changed the background or they've cut that character out. So, As in he's no longer fucking Well so the Hong Kong and Eve. There was a Tibetan character Tibetan in the original yeah. Doctor Strange um what do they call them? Comic books. But then it, when it was recast for the film, it was basically just rewritten as like a regular, like it was played by Tilda Swinton, a white British character and just kind of written like that. Yeah, because for whatever reason, and I don't understand my geopolitics uh, is, is China occupy and I guess. Poor at best. Like Tibet, yeah. But there you China, go. yeah. I China know. and Tibet. I don't know. Cool. Yeah. China don't like the Dalai Lama. China scary. China too much influence. At least that's what I'm told. That's what I'm hearing. That's what you're hearing? Speaking of what I'm hearing. In terms of search engines. Yep. Google, obviously. My computer started giving me DuckDuckGo a while ago and I was like, what the fuck mm. is this shit? Apparently it's like it's good. the thing to use. DuckDuckGo they was don't a thing track, 10 years ago. Yeah, but they don't track any of your shit and they don't control what you, like they don't moderate what you search, what comes up, whereas Google does apparently. I don't know this dude, again. I yeah. use either like that DuckDuckGo or Ecosia, which is like this other one which plants a tree for every eight searches you do and it also doesn't track your data and all that. Crap. I wonder whether they actually not do that, a, Dave. I don't know, but it's not, a, it's not as good as Google in terms of a search engine. What's is DuckDuckGo Duck like? up to scratch? It's all right. I mean, it, the problem with those ones is it doesn't give you as much, like when you Google something and sometimes you just want an answer straight up, it'll give you a there. These ones are just like, they're giving you web pages and stuff. Yeah, that's so the only problem. Like, I yeah. get it, but I just oh, I don't know. have a massive problem with what Google d is doing to me. No, neither. Neither do I. Not enough for me to change, I don't think. No. I'd certainly be open to it, but I've been scared off because Google have set a certain expectation for me and it's probably not one I'm going to be able to go back on. Well, I don't want to have to like... It's just made my life easy. For the sake of whatever the fuck I'm getting or like from how it, from the sake of like, oh, I'm not getting tracked or like they're not looking at everything I'm looking at. Like, yeah, but I can get to, I can find the answer I'm looking for. Also, when they, how do you feel about being tracked? I mean, the reality is I feel because like I've Because they're not tracked tracking everywhere. you specifically. Like, it's just like, oh, he's been looking at this, so we'll show you ads for that. 
I mean, if that's all they're doing, then sure. Oh, but shit. That's so, like, I don't, that doesn't really get a B in my bonnet. There might be people out there that's saying that's fucked up. I don't know. I think it's just, yeah, like the. They're not like Edward Simpson. No, no, no. But I think it's something about like, isn't it crazy? Like if they were trying to float now, like as just an idea, like, oh yeah, we'll just, we're going to like, your data is, this is, has a value to it of this. And we're just going to take it for free. Like you have no control over the value of your own data. We just take it. Like if they were trying to sell that to you now, you'd be going, fuck you. How about that? But they wouldn't because they've it just gear it up slowly. Slowly. Would have, mate, this would have been in the works for fucking ages. Mm. Like, that's not the way to do it. You just got to do it really fucking Gradually. Slowly. And then before you know it, it's just like. I saw something that came up on that um, Bear Lab or not Bear Lab, fucking Shark Stand. Shark Lions? Tank? Shark Tank. Shark Tank. <laughs> Bear Lab. <laughs> Bear Lab. <laughs> Sure. Shark Tank, where this guy's like, you can put this browser extension on where it goes, you don't get tracked. And if you do get tracked, you earn, because they're fucking using your data and they're selling it, you can get a percentage of that. How, how, how does so that- So you accrue like points and shit, which can be exchanged for like products or cash. See, that seems to be, I like that idea. It's pretty good. I'll least, happily I, don't know how, I don't know how practical it is, but I like the idea. Because it's funny, right? Like people are like, oi, I'm fucking, I want my privacy. Unless you're going to pay me for it, then you can see whatever I'm looking at. Yeah. Because that's kind of it, right? No one really gives a fuck. Trade crypto, there you go. It wasn't Bitcoin. Um, I'd prefer that. I mean, again, I don't really, I don't have too many skeletons in the old search history closet. No. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's pretty rudimentary, pretty, pretty up and down, pretty yeah. fucking, you know. News, sports news, porn. You get the drift, punters and dribblers. I think that's everyone. Umbrella on the course. Oh, shit. Umbrella on the course. Someone's wigging out. Someone is Dude, these out. umbrellas, man, and I'm not like... Beach I, umbrellas suck. No, there, no, are, no, no. there are some I, that I've are good. Got, no, 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 I've got a bone to pick. I've got a bone to pick, and I'm picking it. I have got an incredible umbrella, right? That does what? Has a spiral on the bottom and you twist it into place and that's it. There's so many umbrellas out there that don't have the screw on them and it's just like smooth. And of course, in a fucking mildly windy day or even a soft breeze, it's going to... I bet you this doesn't have a screw on the bottom of it. No 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 screw. screw. What are we doing? They should be illegal. Yeah. There should be a certain code with which umbrellas are held to. Because that thing flies down the beach as someone's they laying sunbake in, you get a fucking pole in the face. Of course face. you do. Punters and dribblers, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're watching Bathurst 1000, uh, probably warm-ups, and someone's umbrella that doesn't have a corkscrew at the bottom of it has flown onto the track. There's also what they do. So, like, I think the metal umbrella is bad, like the metal pole. Because I've got the metal one. Metal? I've had a, as in, like, that thing's metal. Oh, yeah, like that aluminium yeah, yeah, yeah. cheap shit. Yeah, yeah. You need the wooden one mm. or something like it. Or like it. a plastic. Yeah, or a plastic. But even then, but there's another thing you they have that I've seen, and only the good ones, is they have... Yeah, come on in, bro. Um, they have the screw on the bottom, but then they also have like a sandbag attached to it. So you fill that thing with sand as an extra weight. To yep. weight the thing down. Has it got the screw bottom? Yeah, screw bottom. Onto the weight. With a sandbag thing attached to the pole that you then fill with sand and then that thing holds it at the base as well. And then you got to build up around it. But like... So that's smart. Yeah, that's smart. That shit house. Honestly, that's not up to code. No. Everything else is up to code. Sunscreen's up to code. Regulated. Up Look, to code. this poor bastard's having a sprint through the sand to go and grab it. Well done, big fella. That's good energy. Now move it. I'd be pulling it down because I mean, you don't yeah, want to. You don't want to marry Poppins. I don't know about his shit, technique. Dude. I don't know about that his That looks technique. like it does have a screw on the bottom, Eddie, from a long distance. No, I'm seeing a I pointed don't, tip. I don't think it does. Let's, Let's have see. a look. This is a close-up camera. We're going to see it come out of the sand. He's grabbed it. Look at this guy. One foul swoop. That's a good lift. It's no. got the screw. It no, does. It doesn't. Well, it's no, got it a point. Doesn't, no, it mate. doesn't. No, it doesn't. What are you on about? No, there's, that's screwless. That's just the bottom of a cricket stump, basically. That's shit house. No wonder it's on the track. Be better. 
If I had more time, Tom, I'd be, I'd oh, be riding. Them again? Oh, oh, kids. God. Bin it. Yeah, but you know what? That's smart footy by the parents. Kids, go get it. I don't want to be on camera. Oh, here they are. They're right there. Oh, they're sitting right on the fucking... That's something that I remember from Bathurst last year. Not a lot of sunshade. No wonder they've got an umbrella, these poor kids. You know, burnt, burnt near to death from the, the burnt hot buggery Bathurst time. rays. Smell of petrol in the air. But I don't like that. That just goes back into the kids' hands. That that umbrella's that umbrella is not finished. If I was running Bathurst, I'd be like, get someone down there to confiscate that umbrella because it's not up to code. Yeah, it's break very it simple. down. But that umbrella will ha- play a part in the weekend again. I dare say. <laughs> you don't think that's the first time we'll see it? Well, I don't think it's the last time we'll see it. No. Last time. Because yeah. you've just it's gone straight back into <coughs> the kids' hands. Oh God. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> How long have we been going for, David? Um, just about to hit an hour and a half. Probably about us. I think that's pretty good, Eddie. Um, I'm happy with that, Tom. Yeah, I think so. Um, Merch shop, Sunday, 6 p.m. Make smart decisions. That's it. Uh, I think that's it from us. Subscribe on the YouTube if you're already here. Like, comment, share, tag, whatever the fuck it is. It, it does make a difference. What that difference is, we can't be sure. What we can be sure of is the importance of it. And also the importance of you copping a hat and a t-shirt on Sunday night. Until that time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>